What's up friends? If you've been wondering how much money it really costs to move to Canada, look no further. My name is Anastasia and in this channel, Make That Change, we're talking about how you can improve your life, move to a new country and become successful in a new environment. In this video specifically, we're going to talk about money and more specifically, how much money you need to have and save and spend in order to move to Canada. Let's get started. All right. So as we try to estimate the amount of money you actually need to move to Canada, each case differs and is very unique. The amount of money that you might spend as a sole applicant coming from Russia will, di will differ significantly from the amount of money that a family of four might spend moving somewhere from Latin America. Nevertheless, we're going to try to make some approximations and come up with some average numbers um, so that you can have a better idea how much money you need. We'll be using Canadian dollars and in the end of the video we'll convert them to USD to help you better gauge uh, the numbers. So keep watching till the end. Let's start with the language test. It's important that you speak the language of the country that you're moving to. In Canada, there's two languages, English and French. So you have to take the respective tests in order to immigrate. English test is called IELTS and then French test is called TEF. English one will cost you about 300 bucks and then the French one will cost you $440. Keep in mind that you might also need some tutoring to ramp up on some of your language speaking or reading or listening skills before you take the exam. So that might cost you some extra money. Also, you might not be super happy with your test results, so you might need to retake that test more than once. Next goes educational credential assessment. It's used to verify that your diploma or degree is equal and valid to a Canadian one. You should use a designated organization to do that kind of assessment. We're gonna leave some links below so that you can find the right one for you. Most applicants are going to use World Education Services or WES. We're gonna leave some links below and make sure you can use them because they're the good guys. Now, the cost of such a degree evaluation is about $220. Now, I have a life hack for you. If you have several degrees or several diplomas to verify and evaluate, make sure you send them all at once because they charge you per request. If you decide to send an additional diploma or certificate for that evaluation, you're going to have to spend an extra 100 bucks. Also, keep in mind that you might end up spending $200 to $250 on delivery fees as well as translations if your diplomas are not in English or French. So what's the total for all the educational assessments and stuff like that? Well, it's going to come to you to about $400 or $450. Apart from your credential assessments, you'll need to take a whole bunch of other documents, things like police certificate, birth certificate, pay stubs, job references, and your passport and travel documents and or travel documents. All these documents are necessary and mandatory for you to collect in order to apply for immigration. Also, keep in mind, if any of these documents are not in English or French, you also have to pay for translations. The price of retrieving all of these documents differs from country to country, but our research shows that most spend about $400. The next step, and the final one before getting your visa, is taking the medical exam. Medical exam is important because Canada prefers to admit healthy individuals so that they don't burden the medical system. Medical exam will cost you around $250. You might also need to travel to a bigger city to be able to take that exam because not all doctors are qualified to do that. So, if you're from a smaller city and you have to travel to a bigger one, you might also want to have to spend money on traveling like plane tickets, hotels and stuff like that. So add an extra two to four to five hundred dollars depending on how expensive traveling is in your country. Once you've received an invitation to apply for a visa, you're gonna have to spend some money. It'll cost you $825 to process the application, as well as $500 for the right of permanent residence, which is essentially your permanent resident visa stamped in your passport. Depending on the province that you're willing to settle in, you might want to consider getting a paid medical insurance for about three months until you get and qualify for the healthcare card in that province. The paid insurance will cost you roughly around $300 and there's a variety of companies to choose from to get that insurance. Canada requires you to have a minimum amount of money in your bank account for at least six months before you apply for a visa. This is done so that, so that they can make sure that you have sufficient funds and the money is yours and not somebody else's. The amount for you to hold in your account changes every year. That is because of minimum wage changes and some other things. So you want to make sure that you have 50% of the lower income paid in Canada. Why 50% you might ask? Well, it's gonna take you about five to six months to find a job in Canada. So they wanna make sure that you have enough money in your bank account to survive. If you have a bigger family, the amount is gonna be bigger as well. Now let's talk some specific numbers. 
In 2021, if you're a single person, the amount of money required for you to have in your bank account is $13,000. For two people, a couple, you need $16,150. Now, finally, if you're a family of three people, the amount you need to have is around $20,000. The more money you have in your bank account, the better, of course, but this is the minimum that you should make sure to have. All right, you've gone through so much paperwork. Now it's time for exciting things. Let's start thinking about your plane ticket. The price that you're gonna pay for your plane ticket is gonna differ based on where you're flying from, when you're flying, and what airlines you love, and maybe you're fancy, so you wanna fly business class as well. But anyways, if you're cheap like me, you're gonna fly economy, and it's gonna cost you anywhere between 300 bucks to $2,000 depending on so many factors. The good news is that it's just a one-way ticket. And last but not least, you need to find a place to stay in Canada. And you wanna make sure that you have that sorted out before you fly to Canada. Many people use hotels, Airbnb, or maybe they make friends, so they stay at their couches for a little while until they find a permanent place. And keep in mind that you need to pay for your stay before you move to Canada, right? And that means you cannot use the money from your proof of funds to finance your stay. Make sure that money stays untouched until you arrive to Canada. All right, here I've got a life hack for you. You can use the website called Numbeo or something like that. I'm gonna leave the link below. And this website shows you the cost of living in a lot of different cities. So you can compare how much it's gonna cost you to do groceries, transportation, pay utilities, and other things. So make sure you use that website to know exactly what to expect once you arrive. Now, let's try and sum all of that up. Let's assume that you have successfully passed your language test, you did it from the first try, good job on that, you got successful credential assessment, and you didn't encounter any bumps along the road and none of the unexpected or extra expenses. So, for one person, the immigration process would cost around $3,500 plus proof of funds as of 2021, that's $13,000 plus a plane ticket, plus accommodation costs for the first two to four weeks. Comes to immigration costs, Canada is fairly affordable compared to countries like UK or Australia. Nevertheless, if currency in your country is weak, these numbers may sound super intimidating. Luckily, there are ways to move to Canada without paying the big bucks. We're gonna cover that in another video. Also, keep in mind that the payments are spread across several months so that you can actually have some time to save up before you deck out an extra cash for the next step in your immigration process. That's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to turn that like button blue and subscribe to our channel so that we can get inspired and encouraged to make more videos. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. We'll be happy to look at them and answer them. And in the meantime, uh, bye friends and I'll see you in the next video. Please take care too.